So here are eight tried true approaches to maximizing your savings, right? And they do work. They are only a temporary measure for a brighter financial future. Okay. So the name of the game is to switch from working for money to have money working for you. You get that? In the beginning of your race to save money, I want you to tell yourself, I'm switching. This is the beginning. The moment you put your first $100 down, I want you to imagine, I am now switching from working for money to have money work for me. So your first $100 is the first $100 going to work for you, and then it'll be $200, $300, and eventually it grows and feeds itself. Focus on your gain. Get your expectations right. So if you are going to do this, I want you to focus on what you're setting out to do. The great first step is to get familiar with a bunch of banks' calculators. They're all over the internet. So to work roughly how much you are able to borrow based on your income, your expenses, and your current level of debt. It's very common that when people start considering going for a house or buying a house, they already have some credit card and perhaps some debt on that credit card, a car that you're trying to pay off and so forth. But here's your life happening. So you have your income, your expenses out. Play with the calculators. Most banks, if you go into their sites and pull up the calculator, it's an incredible game. I think that most people, when they actually do this exercise, they start to become a bit more wiser about the money. It's a worthwhile play. Once you have established this, you start to calculate the deposit you need to get your loan approved. Aim at 20% of the value of the property. If you want to avoid paying for lender's mortgage insurance, okay, normally called LMI, lender's mortgage insurance. Now, be also clear that that insurance is, that is an insurance for the bank, not for you, right? So, basically, when uh, you have to have an insurance, the bank is saying, we will lend you the money, but if something happens to you or your capacity to repay, we're going to call on the insurance and the insurance will then pay for the mortgage. So. If you have a lesser deposit than 20%, the banks may be looking at you and say, yeah, yeah, we'll lend you the money, but hold on a second, you have to insure it if something goes wrong. Also, now that you have this understanding, I want you to consider that sometimes, some people argue that it's valid to pay for the LMI. So let's just say you do your sums, you realize you're already in your 30s, by the time you save 20%, right, Prices are already moving up. Sometimes you've got to bite the bullet, put your 10% down, pay for the LMI, right? But you're in. And if, the, if it is a rising market, you're already in and you rise it with it. And that insurance policy was the best investment you ever done. You have got to do your numbers though. There are all sorts of arguments here. I, I believe in getting in the market as soon as you can, doing your cash flow, and the moment you realize you can deal with the loan, get in. You need to know your capacity to save, play with the calculators, and then have a look at the amount that you can borrow. So let's talk about that for a second. If your capacity allows you to say, to borrow, let's just say 800,000, right? I want you to start playing with the numbers like this. If it is your first house, don't maximize the loan. If the banks will lend you 800, maybe you go for 650, right? Don't max it out. It's just as a, a process of discipline. You will be around, trust me, you will be around for a while. You do not need to buy the biggest possible house as your first house, right? So the difference in the deposit you need to save is significant. And saving a deposit for a smaller lo loan amount can help you to get into the market sooner, right? Now, once you understand this game and you played with the calculators and now you find out how much you need to borrow, can I say something to you? Families do help. You do not need a wealthy uncle, right, that uh, will leave you some money as an inheritance. I want you to know a couple of things about family. When the time to bite the bullet comes, it's okay to ask your parents, to ask brothers, sisters, grandparents to help you to get into your first home. 
Often families will pull together and help. So if you show your families and relatives your game plan, look, I already played with the calculators. This is how much I can save. I know I can borrow 800,000, but I'm only going for 650. And this is the house I'm looking at. I think you can start to bring these people in to help you out. But also have in the back of your mind, right, that eventually you should refinance that house when it grows in value and you drive the debt down to repay the people that helped you. And even consider for you to actually repay them a little bit of interest, you know, because it's kind of a, it takes two to, to tangle, right? Parents and family can help fast track your savings either by gifting you part of the deposit or all of it, right? By giving you an interest-free -free loan also works. However, some of the banks may look at a gift from, from the parents as, mm, not gonna lend you the money, why? Because back into the insurance conversation, if you can't prove that you can save the money, what actually happens then is the bank says, ah, are you credit worthy? Or is just mommy and daddy helping you? So it's a bit of a tough play. That's why we have the ability to approach so many different banks. This is all part of putting it all together, right? I want you to know something. Going forward in Australia, you will notice that more than 35% of property buyers get a gift or a guarantee from the parents, okay? However, it's important to note that some lenders don't accept, as I said before, a deposit that is a gift. At JDL Strategies, for the last 20 years, we have designed what we call intergenerational strategies. It's not that the parents are giving a gift to the kids. We can actually set up the finance. When you have a good broker, this good broker can set up the finance for you in a way that it's, we call it lifting the next generation into the property market. And that is some of our IP that has helped thousands of families to actually get ahead in life by getting their kids into the property market. Because sometimes if you are taking too long to save the deposit, right, it's, mm, it's tough. Because you see, by the time you have the deposit, if the property is already moved up, now you're gonna save. So it's an, it's a forever trying to catch on the train. You saved a hundred thousand. Now you need 120. By the time you save 120, now you need 150. By the time you save 150, it pays to have a strategic conversations if you are going to lean on family.